What is up, bros and broets? I'm Ink Slasher, and welcome to Weapons of World War II, the series where we look at the future weapons of Call of Duty World War II, look at the history of them, and look at the past Call of Duties they've been in, and try to get a pretty good idea of what they're going to look like in Call of Duty World War II. The weapon that we're looking at today is the STG-44, and as far as this weapon goes, it's one of the coolest weapons history-wise during World War II. So the STG is a German rifle. Now the thing with this rifle is it's actually a selective fire rifle, which means you can either use it semi-automatic or fully automatic, whereas in Call of Duty, when we've seen in the past, it's always been a fully automatic weapon. So possibly in Call of Duty World War II, this may be a select fire weapon where we can choose between fully automatic and semi-automatic. Now the STG-44 was predominantly produced during 1943 to 1945, so closer to the end of World War II. And after World War II, it was still used by many German troops. Now the purpose of the production of the STG-44 is they wanted a more compact rifle that could shoot bullets faster to compete with the American and Allied soldiers' semi-automatic rifles, aka at the SVT and weapons along those lines. This weapon would be fully automatic or semi-automatic be smaller, lighter, and easier to use than the opponent's weapons. That is why the STG-44 was created. The way they were able to do this is by using a smaller bullet than a normal bolt-action or semi-automatic rifle. The size bullet that they used was a 7.92 by 33 millimeter cruise cartridge. Now, this cartridge was in between the size of a pistol and bolt-action or semi-automatic rifle, and because of this, they were able to make the entire weapon smaller. On top of this, in real life, this weapon has a rate of fire of around 550 to 600 RPM, and finally, its effective range is about 300 meters to 800 meters, depending on how good a soldier was with the iron sights. So the order to make this type of weapon in the German army originally wasn't actually put out by Hitler. It was put out by several different commanders in the German army, and what they wanted to create in the beginning was a machine carbine, aka a fully automatic carbine rifle. Originally, this weapon was called the MKB-42, which stood for the Masha 9 Karabiner in German. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but when you translate it, it literally translates to the machine carbine. And the 42 part of the MKB-42 stood for the year it was created, aka 1942. Now, this weapon was to be made by either the Walther or Haniel Weapon Companies, which are two massive weapon companies, especially during World War II. Now, there was a ton of problems with this weapon. The weapon would jam, bullets wouldn't fire properly, there were just a ton of problems with the weapon, yet the German commanders liked what they saw, they liked the size, and they liked the efficiency of the weapon, so they said, keep working on it, and when you get it right, we'll start mass production. Now, if you followed Call of Duty for a long time, there's two types of STG-44s that have been in various Call of Duties, the MP-44 and the STG-44. Now, what is the difference between these two weapons? absolutely nothing. All that's different between these two weapons is the time in which they were produced. And let me explain that part of it. So at this point where the MKB-42 somewhat failed, but they wanted to increase production, this is when the Haniel Weapon Company really stepped up, led by Hugo Schmeiser. I have no idea if I said that right, but he was the one that finally got the design right. And the design that they went with was the MP-43. Now, why is it called MP-43? Well, at this exact time, when he finally got the weapon designed to work, jam less, and actually fire properly was when Hitler put out an order to cease the production of all rifles other than the Car 98. If you didn't know, Hitler's favorite rifle was the Car 98, and because of this, this is the weapon he wanted his entire army using. But of course, the Car 98 is a bolt-action rifle, fires slower, it's heavier, and compared to the MP44 or STG44, it's just not quite as good of a rifle. So, so what the commanders did is made this project secret, even secret from Hitler, by calling it the MP43. Why did this work? Because MP on paper doesn't stand for assault rifle, it stands for machine pistola or machine pistol. And at the time, Hitler wanted the production of more machine pistols and less rifles like we just talked about. So by hiding it on paper as the MP43, all of a sudden, 
Hitler had no idea what was being produced. So the MP43 was obviously the machine pistola created in 1943 and the MP44 in 1944. So what happened between the change from MP44 to STG44? Well, it's simple. All that really happened is Hitler found out. Basically, Hitler had a giant conference with all of the army commanders. All of the commanders come meet Hitler and tell him kind of what is going on with the battle. And in this kind of conference, one of the commanders says, we need more of those new rifles. But of course, Hitler said he wanted the ceased production of any other rifles other than the Car 98. So to him, this was quite the shock. He said, what, what are you talking about? What about these new rifles? And then the commander had to go on to explain that these rifles were being made in secret and you gotta try them out. So basically, Hitler went out and tried the MP44, and he thought they were absolutely amazing. All of a sudden, the Car 98 doesn't look so good to him, and he says, start making these, and he picked the name for the weapon, the STG44, aka the Storm Guver 44, which in English means Assault Rifle 44. The name Assault Rifle was born that day. Up until that point, there was no such thing as the AK-47, aka the Kalashnikov, anything along those lines. This was the birth of the modern day assault rifle. So the only differences between the MP43, MP44, and STG44, aside from very subtle manufacturing differences, is the time they were made. The MP43 was made in 1943, the MP44 in 1944, and finally the STG44 was made in 1944 after Hitler found out about the whole project. Now as far as this weapon's effect on World War II, a lot of people say that this was the single best weapon during World War II, and if there would have been more mass production earlier, instead of Hitler putting a ban on the production of any assault rifles, this weapon could have actually won the Germans the Second World War. But that's just prediction, there's no proof to prove that, it's just what some experts still say to this day. So as far as the real life history for this weapon, that's pretty much all that she wrote. However, this weapon is still used today in wars like the Iraq War and Syrian Civil War by terrorists still. So as far as Call of Duty goes in multiplayer, the weapon that's actually been used more was the MP44. The MP44 was in Call of Duty 1, Call of Duty 2, Call of Duty 3, and of course was also in Call of Duty 4. Now in Call of Duty 4, it didn't really make sense to be in the game, because as I mentioned, the MP44 was predominantly used in the first half of 1944. After that, it was the STG44. So to have this weapon in a modern warfare game really didn't make any sense. And some people think that that is the reason why this weapon was unable to use any attachments whatsoever during Call of Duty 4. Then came along Call of Duty World at War, and in this game they had the STG-44. Now of course, this weapon was the only fully automatic assault rifle in Call of Duty World at War, even though the BAR, a weapon that was an LMG in the game, was technically an assault rifle. And then moving forward, in Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 3, there was no STG-44 in these games. However, it was in the Zombies maps. So, it is in Black Ops 1, 2, and 3, but only in Zombies maps. No multiplayer. The next Call of Duty game to actually have this weapon in multiplayer was Advanced Warfare. Now, the STG-44 was brought in on August 20th to PlayStation and later on Xbox, but this weapon was received through supply drops. Now, this weapon was ranging from a 3 to a 5 bullet kill and had a 750 RPM fire rate. Now, as we know, in real life, this weapon has a 550 to 600 RPM fire rate, so a little bit faster in advanced warfare than in real life. Now, what can we expect out of Call of Duty World War II? From what the developers said, they are trying to make this weapon as realistic as possible. So what this means is this should be an assault rifle that's fully automatic and also selective fire with semi-automatic. Maybe that'll be attachment, I'm not quite sure at this point. On top of that, this weapon should range from a 550 to 600 RPM fire rate and probably be similar to Advanced Warfare with maybe a 3 to a 5 bullet kill, unless of course you're using select fire. And finally, the last signature thing about the STG-44 during World War II is it had a 30 round 
magazine, and I would expect to see the same thing out of Call of Duty World War II. And that's really all I have to say about the STG-44. In this video, I tried to focus a lot more on the actual real-life history as opposed to the Call of Duty history, and let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. It took a lot of research and a lot of work, so if you did enjoy, it would be very greatly appreciated if you could hit that like button, and let me know down in the comments what weapon you would like to see me look at next. PPSH, maybe the Thompson, maybe something along those lines. Let me know down in the comments below, and also, if you're new to the channel and like what you saw, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I upload new Call of Duty videos every single day of the week, and if you're interested in that, the best way to stay up to date is hitting that subscribe button. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out.